Morning, another dreary day in Banbury in Oxfordshire. Paul Gibson here, hello. Um, been doing quite a few videos lately of my little bass collection. Showed you my um, J&D black jazz bass. I showed you my orange custom built Bruno bass, which was my first self build. I showed you the Dulce bass, which is the 51 star precision, which is the um, my um, most recent build. So there's only one more bass to show you now, and it's this one, my number one, my Fender Jazz Deluxe. There you go. Hot or what? Love this bass. It's my number one, my number one gigging bass. Use it most of the time. Sounds amazing, looks amazing, and it really is just a beautiful instrument. Mexican made. Um, extremely high quality, extreme, extremely good sound. It's just a really beautiful instrument. This was the instrument that, that replaced my Stingray that I had before that I've mentioned, my Music Man Stingray, which I loved. Loved the sound of it, loved the look of it. It was an amazing instrument, but it just made my hand hurt. It didn't get on well with the neck at all. It was too fat, it was too chunky. I couldn't do a two and a half hour gig with it, so it went. And um, this replaced it, and it's beautiful. It's so nice to play. It's the nicest neck. It's the best neck of any bass I've ever played in my life. And I've been playing bass for, don't know, getting on for 30 years probably now. 27 years I think I first picked up the bass and I've been playing ever since and this is the best neck I've ever played. Beautiful one piece maple, skunk stripe in the back there. Fender logo, sort of 70s-ish inspired. Um, but yeah, really, really gorgeous. It's not the lightest bass in the world, but I don't mind that. It's got a bit of heft to it, which is good. You know, does that add to the tone? I don't know really. There's a lot of conjecture over woods and how woods sort of sound. My orange self-built jazz bass is made of Palovnia and it weighs nothing, but it sounds meaty, you know, whereas this is a very dense wood. I'm not sure what the wood is. I really should know, seeing as this is my bass. I think it's ash. I think it's ash, but I'm not sure. Probably wrong on that. Usually am. Um, anyway, got this from a guy who'd had it for about six months. Um, and he'd really looked after it. It's still in, you know, it was in pristine condition when he got it, or, or rather when I got it, it's still in very good condition now, despite being gigged very regularly. I'd look after it. There's no dings on it. If it gets a ding in it, doesn't matter really. End of the day, it's a tool. But, you know, I try to look after it. And um, it's never let me down. Always sounds great. Always cuts through in the mix. Very easy to play. Um, just a joy, really, a joyful instrument to have. Absolutely beautiful, I'm really glad. Um, basses come and go, you know. Um, I think this one's a keeper. I think I'll keep this one forever. Um, certainly as, as long as I'm able to play gigs, I think this this will stick with me. Um, and it's, it's just a really high quality instrument. As I said, it's Mexican built. Not people sometimes a bit snobby about Mexican bases you know Mexican fenders oh it's not a real fender you know who cares you know like I said with my other bases it's does it matter it doesn't matter to me it's um it's a beautiful instrument and it sounds amazing and the build quality is stunning and I've this is better than some American fenders I've played um, and I've played a lot of bases over the years and I've played Japanese built fenders which are awesome as well and the Squires, the early Squires from the 80s were amazing as well, but they weren't, you know, they were built in other factories. A lot of them are built by sort of people like Samick and Court and, you know, it's coming off the same production line as like Ibanez guitars and, you know, and like Epiphones and things. And it's, it's still a Fender because uh, it's got a Fender on the headstock. I don't know where this was made, which factory. It's, it's Mexican, like I say, so, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's 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 a great bass, and um, I play it a lot. And I'll be gigging it tomorrow night as well with my band Till Dawn. So, quick look at it. It's got a high mass bridge, which is sturdy as. I can tune this bass, do a full two and a half hour gig with it, and not have to check the tuning in the gig at all. Finish the gig, chuck it in the case, drive home. You know, 
open it out the case again a couple of days after the gig for a little play around and it's still in tune it still sounds exactly how I left it so yep yeah, spot on with that it's got Nordstrand pickups which are great they sound very good um, I think they they're noiseless pickups for a start um, and you can achieve that sort of hi-fi sound which is really popular I'm not a big fan of it I like a bit of dirt in my bass tone um, but these do dirty up quite nicely as well um, so Nordstrand pickups um, it's got active circuitry which is handy if you want it with a little toggle switch so you can subtly flick between the two active passive I like passive basses I like passive bass tones I like vintage bass tones so I leave it on passive all the time some instruments like you know my 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 stingray that I had that was pass that was active all the time so you know you couldn't switch the ac uh, the active circuitry off so that's just the way it sounded it sounded awesome quite happy with that this sounds when you kick the active circuitry in, it doesn't sound that much different to how it does passively, really. There's a bit of a volume boost, but in terms of, it doesn't introduce like loads of new frequencies or anything like that. So it, it still sounds really good, just a bit louder. The other thing is it's got um, an 18 volt preamp, so you need two batteries, uh, as opposed to the nine volt that most active instruments have. So I'm happy just to leave it in passive. Sounds great like that. Really, really good. Um, what's really good about this bass for me as, as a gigging musician is that it's got a master volume, which is fantastic. I play, um, my other jazz bass is a more traditional um, layout where you've got the volume for the, volume for the pickups, individual independent volumes for each pickup, and then you've got a master tone control. I like that, and that's the traditional way of how the jazz basses were wired up. But the way this is wired, for me as a gigging musician, it's even better. I'm in a cover band. Some of the songs I play finger style, some of them I play with a pick. When I play with a pick, the signal's louder because there's more attack in the sound. So I like to flick between volume. So when I play my fingers, I have the volume on full. And then when I play with my pick, I knock the volume back about a quarter turn and then that just normalizes the volume, standardizes it in the mix. Um, and when you're doing that with a dual pickup or a dual volume instrument like my other jazz, because I have both pickups on all the time on most songs, I've got to turn two volume controls, which, you know, it's all right, it's doable, obviously it's not a big job, but it's easy just to have one and I can just easily adjust the volume as I need to which is great. Um, the tone settings on this are more um, complex than on the standard type of jazz bass where you've just got a master tone. This you've got a mid control, mid 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 cut, mid boost of a centre detent so you can get it back to the centre. You've got a concentric pot here for the bridge, for the, the bridge, for the bass and the treble. You've got the treble on top there so you can boost and cut accordingly and then you've got the base on the bottom which you can do that as well um, and then you've got a pan so you can pan between the pickups which is really cool as well you can like I say most times I have this both pickups going because I like that sort of growly jazz sound but if you go that way towards the front pickup the neck pickup then you get a bit of a P bassy sound and then you can go back for the bridge pickup only which is more of a sort of honky funky sort of tighter sound which I don't really use that I only use that on one song on a we do a Red Hot Chili Peppers song that's got that needs that kind of sound so um, and then you can pan between the two generally I just have it centralized because I like the sound of the two pickups on the jazz bass um, and that's pretty much it as an instrument it's beautiful I love it have a little listen to how it sounds let's have both pickups on if you play it softly, there's that sort of nice sort of hollow. Sustains well, not that I use sustain really, but it sounds good saying it. Um, yeah, so you've got that kind of hollow jazz bass tone, which is really famous and you, know, you hear it on loads of songs and
then if you want to hit with a pick, which I do for some of the songs, you can get more of a... Get more of a sort of growl, you know, and that pick attack as well, which cuts through really nicely. The amp that I'm playing this through basically is a, is a practice amp with everything on flat. Um, what's quite good having the, even though I tend to favour just a basic tone, master tone control, having the middle boost and cut on this means that I can, if I need to poke through the mix a little bit more at gig, then I can just turn the mids up subtly and just get a bit more poke, which is cool. Um, so on the, the bridge pickup, sort of more p bassy sort of sound. Which is more sort of synonymous with that sort of sound. And then going back to the bridge pickup, you've got that sort of... useful again for more sort of funky sort of tones really um, so yeah it's uh, it's my number one bass like I say it'll be a keeper I don't think I'd ever get rid of it as long as I'm playing in a band um, I just really enjoy the versatility of a of a jazz bass um, I think you can get pretty much any tone you want really between the pickup pan controls and the EQ controls, I think you can pretty much get anything, you know. Um, I don't slap, I try and slap if I feel like trying to learn how to slap, but the world doesn't need to hear me trying to slap a bass, so I'm not even gonna bother. But I think if you were a slap player, then you could get a really fine, sort of scoopy, funky, slappy tone for this. Similarly, you can um, boost, you know, boost the bottom end and you can get a really nice, sort of um, like R&B or reggae or soul sort of sound. Um, in fact, if you play sort of, if you, if you palm mute it and play with your thumb, you get a, you know, that nice sort of, Really nice, that sort of Motown esque, you know. Booker T and the MGs, I think that is, isn't it? So, yeah, you can do pretty much anything with it. I think that's the thing with the jazz bass, you know, you can do um, a lot with it. What I'm going to do on my next build is because I like the sound of the jazz and I like the simplicity of the precision, um, what I might do is get a jazz bass made or make one myself where. <laughs> I only have one single control. Just have the both pickups on all the time because that's really much how I play it. Have the tone on full so I can get rid of a tone control controls. Um, get rid of the pickup pan control because everything's going to be on full and just low volume. And I think that'd be that'd be probably the greatest combination for me for what I want to do. The jazz sound. Um, take away all the complexity of you know messing around with tone controls and just have the the volume so that's for another day though anyway this is my Fender Mexican deluxe jazz bass and it's awesome and I love it thank you very much